a very good morning students today let me start a new chapter that is organic evolution in this organic evolution you will have to study about some theories like lamarckism darwinism which is otherwise also called darwin wallace theory and you will have to study about neo darwinism and then mutation theory weismann theory and so on and to begin with let me start with this uh, organic evolution introduction part you know what is evolution is the term evolution is a derivative of greek term wherein evolve refers to unroll or unravel so unrolling the events that have taken place in the past or unraveling the mystery of this history of this life that is how this life has originated on this earth and how that is being continued so studying about all these things is referred to as evolution and you know evolution is happening in both living and non living world and the one which happens in the living world is called organic evolution and the one which happens in the non living world is called inorganic evolution and as a biology student or zoology student you are supposed to learn about organic evolution so organic evolution is nothing but the process of gradual change from one condition to another condition it is a very simplest definition that we can give for evolution that is the process of gradual change from one condition to another condition and always this change is from simpler side or simpler conditions to complex conditions because as you know that in the present day living organisms we observe complex characters but their ancestors had very simpler characters so that is what the process of evolution is and this evolution can be defined by different authors in different ways however uh, the very popular definition that was given by a very famous evolutionist by name dawsonski it is as follows nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution so very wonderful statement given by this dawsonski that is without studying about this evolution there is no meaning in studying about the other aspects of biology so that is what he wanted to convey now coming to introduction organic evolution is a unifying concept in the study of biology and evolution is the differentiation of organisms over the course of time and though it was generally believed that organisms were created independently by god scientists stumbled on a number of startling evidences which indicated that organisms by gradual modifications have evolved into more complex organisms lamarck was the first scientist to explain the mechanism of evolution and his concept of evolution has two important views of the concepts or otherwise called laws the first one being the law of use and disuse of organs and the second one being the law of inheritance of acquired characters lamarck thought that environment is constantly undergoing changes that is very true that you know uh, the environment in which we are living is not a static one it keeps on changing from time to time and even in the same day in different times there will be the changes that we observe in the environment so in this everlasting changes in the environmental conditions organisms will have to modify themselves to survive better or to thrive and such kind of changes that have taken place in the body of these living organisms we call it as modifications or in other words adaptations so lemer thought that the environment is constantly undergoing changes and accordingly some organs are employed more frequently that is overused and some organs are sparingly used that is very rare and the overused organs tends to develop better become prominent while disused organs tends to shrink gradually 
and finally such organs will disappear all together and such characters which are developed by an animal during its life span are known as acquired characters that means the new characters that are developed in the body of an animal in order to survive better in the everlasting changes in the environmental conditions they are called as acquired characters and lemark believed that such characters acquired by an organism or an animal are passed on to its offspring in the next generation successfully so lemark was of the opinion that acquired characters are very important coming to the details of lemarkism jean baptist de lemark his time was from 1744 to 1829 and he was a very great french naturalist and lemark sought a naturalistic explanation for the diversity of modern organisms and animals seen in the fossil record and the theory proposed by him is popularly known as theory of inheritance of acquired characters and that was proposed in the year 1809 and his theory is also referred to as use and disuse theory the reason which i already explained you in the previous slide coming to some important postulates of lemarkism the first one being new needs and as i said already changes in the environmental factors like light temperature medium food air etc or migration lead to origin of new needs in living organisms and to fulfill these new needs living organisms have to exert special efforts like changes in habits or behavior so such are the consequences of the new needs and these new needs develop as you know that because of the environmental changes and the second one being use and disuse of organs the new habits involve the greater use of certain organs to meet new needs and the disuse of or lesser use of certain other organs which are of no use in new conditions then the third one being inheritance of acquired characters as i already told you that lemark believed that favorable acquired characters are inheritable and are transmitted successfully to the offsprings so that these are born fit to face the changed environmental conditions and the chances of their survival are increased then the last one speciation and lemark believed that in every generation new characters are acquired and are transmitted to next generation so that the new characters accumulate generation after generation and after a number of generations a new species is formed because that will be collectively sorry collectively developing some new characters or organs hence it leads to the process of speciation so these are some important postulates of lemark and to substantiate his theory he cited the example of giraffe probably you are already aware about this example of giraffe even in your high school itself you must have studied about this example that the ancestors of giraffe were short neck and due to changes in the environment grass became scarce on this earth and these animals had to consume leaves of the trees thus they were forced to stretch their necks continuously or persistently and as a result of overuse the neck and forelimbs elongated and that leads to the development of a uh, very uh, disproportionate sized forelimbs and hindlimbs and very long neck in the modern giraffes and that has been shown in this slide with the help of a photograph you see uh, initially these uh, giraffes were feeding on grasses and then they were feeding on some bushes or intermediate sized plants and finally they have resorted to feed on the leaves of the trees and because of this continuous stretching of the neck and uh, disproportionate sized fore and hind limbs and 
Similarly, Lamarck also cited the example of snakes, that is to substantiate his theory of disuse. And uh, <coughs> the ancestors of snakes had limbs like other reptiles, but they were preyed by predators, and in order to protect themselves from such predators, these reptiles started hiding themselves in underground burrows for long durations. And thus they started disusing their limbs, hence the limbs slowly became reduced in size and ultimately disappeared altogether because of which the present day snakes, they do not have any limbs in their body. And he also quoted the example of horse. And the ancestors of modern horse, that is Equus cabellus, uh, they used to live in the areas with more number of uh, functional digits. And these gradually took to live in areas with dry ground and the change in habit was accompanied by increase in the length of the legs and decrease in the functional digits for fast running over hard ground. So this was the change that he observed in the body of the horse and that was another good example for use and disuse concept of Lamarckism. Now coming to some demerits or criticism of Lamarckism. What Lamarck said, all those characters that are developed by an organism in due course of time will be successfully inherited to next generation and that is why his concept is also called theory of acquired characters. And uh, there are some many critics or demerits of this Lamarckism. Let us go through them. The first one being uh, the criticism explained by August Wiseman. Probably heard of this scientist name. He was a very popular geneticist or a scientist who developed a new concept what is called as germplasm theory. And he was a German biologist who proposed the theory of continuity of germplasm in 1892. And this theory states that a multicellular organism is formed of two types of cells. That is, germ cells which have genes for inheritable characters to the offsprings and somatic cells which have the genes for a particular organ during one's lifetime only. And the environment affects only somatic cells and as link between the generations is through germ cells and somatic cells, they are not transmitted to next generation. So, the acquired characters must be lost with the death of an organism, so these should have no role in evolution. Uh, so this is one of the major drawback or the demerit of Lamarckism that all those characters that are developed by an organism will not be successfully inherited to next generation. And Lamarck's theory was vehemently opposed by August Weismann and he believed that the body of uh, an organism has two parts that is somatoplasm and germplasm. Somatoplasm is concerned with the vegetative functions while the germplasm takes part in reproduction. Hence, according to Weismann, changes that occur in somatoplasm remain with the animal till it is alive and vanish along with the animal. And changes that occur in the germplasm alone are passed on to the next generation and Weismann said that the lengthening of the neck of the giraffe and limbless condition in snakes are the changes in the cytoplasm, sorry, somatoplasm and hence cannot be inherited by the offsprings. And he stoutly opposed Lamarck's theory. That means he strongly disproved Lamarckian concept. According to Weismann, the germplasm takes part, takes part in the formation of the next generation and continues from generation to generation, while the somatoplasm stays as long as the life of the organism and is destroyed along with the death of that organism. And to prove his theory, 
wise man conducted a very simple experiment and he brought a pair of rats and cut off their tails and the rats had tail when they were born but now had acquired the tailless condition and he allowed these rats to breed and obtained the offsprings and such offsprings possessed normal tails as that of their parental types and according to lemar acquired characters are inherited however here if the tailless condition of rats is an acquired character the offspring should have been also born tailless but in fact wiseman continued this experiment for up to 21 generations by cutting off the tails of the newborn rats in every generation but even then even in the 22nd generation also the newborn in the uh, such generations possessed normal tails only so this is the very severe blow for lamarckism the one more example or the uh, exp- the, the proof for disproving the lamarckian concept was developed by a scientist by name paolo probably heard of this uh, scientist name who has conducted a very popular experiment in case of dogs what is known as salivation experiment and the same russian psychophysiologist he trained mice to come for food on hearing the bell and he reported that this training is not inherited and was necessary in each generation and the other such experimental support was developed by kellogg and bell experiment and they fed larvae of silk moths on reduced the quantity of mulberry leaves and they found that decrease in the size of the larva in the next two generations even though these fed normally so there is no environmental influences on such larvae here and the other such experimental support was by casel and philips it is popularly known as casel and philips experiment and they transplanted ovary of black guinea pig into the body of white guinea pig before sexual puberty or maturation and this female when mated with white male guinea pig produced all black young ones and this observation shows that the environment does not influence germplasm however it may influence somatoplasm now coming to the significance of lamarckism it was first comprehensive theory of biological evolution and it nicely explains the existence of vestigial organs in animals due to their continuous disuse a uh, dear students you have already learnt about what are these vestigial organs and lemar quoted such vestigial organs are the good examples for his theory called use and disuse theory and it explains the development of strong jaw muscles and claws in the carnivores due to their continued extra usage and it stimulated other biologists to look for the mechanism of organic evolution or the organic mechanism so these are some important significances of lamarckism now let us go through some uh, sorry the next theory what is called as darwinism i think all of you must have heard about this theory proposed by darwin whose theory is popularly known as darwinism or theory of natural selection so he proposed this darwinism and his time was from 1809 to 1882 and he was a very popular english naturalist and he has done many such uh, wonderful experiments to prove some of the concepts in biology and in the year 1931 sorry 1831 he was selected for a, a very great voyage that was organized by the government of britain and 
he was one of such scientists prominent scientists who was selected for that expedition or voyage and he went on a voyage on a very popular ship what is known as hms beagle and explored south america the galapagos islands and many other islands too which he was very much impressed during this journey or during this expedition and he was highly influenced by the essay entitled on the tendency of varieties of depart independently or indefinitely from the original type by alfred russel wallace and another essay that is what called as principles of geology written by charles lyell and he was also influenced by the theory or uh, the concept explained by malthus very popular uh, population expert coming to the postulates of darwinism the first one being geometric increase it is nothing but the exponential rate of reproduction performed by living organisms which is also called as overproduction or prodigality of production and you know if there is overproduction obviously there will be the competition or there will be the shortage for food and space so that is that the next concept called limited food and space and because of this limited food and space there will be the struggle for existence which he called it also as competitions and because of such competitions variations are originating in the such competitors and that leads to natural selection or survival of the fittest that means nature selects only the the favorable characters and it eliminates the non favorable or useless characters and such a kind of discriminative selection made by the nature is called natural selection and that leads to a concept what is called as survival of the fittest and finally it leads to the inheritance of only the useful variations and the elimination of useless variations and ultimately that leads to the formation of a new set of characters developed in such organisms and that led to the process of speciation you know what is speciation is it is the process of formation of a new species and you should also remember one important thing that speciation cannot happen all of a sudden overnight but it requires millions of years of time to develop a new species so it cannot happen miraculously it can happen only in a gradual process of organic evolution so these are some important postulates of darwinism what happened to the giraffes a question arises you know in case of giraffes those giraffes which could stretch their neck and which could develop very long neck and which could develop very long four limbs they could survive better whereas those giraffes which could not develop both these two characters they are going to be eliminated because they will not get the food easily you know because of fish they are going to perish and that is what has been explained in this theory what is called as survival of the fittest or natural selection as i already told you natural selection it is selecting the giraffes with uh, long neck and long four limbs but it will not select the giraffes with short necks and had less food to eat and the food resources change to leaves only on the upper branches only because of which these giraffes could develop very long neck and the short necks could not reach upper branches no and did not survive also so it could not pass on such genes to the next generations because of their death and such long necked giraffes which survived and reproduced because they were able to reach the food and they could reproduce too so that leads to a kind of uh, different type of reproduction what is known as differential production 
and here in this picture you can clearly observe what is happening here and according to lamarck's view this was the original short necked ancestor and it started stretching its neck to reach the leaves on the higher up on the trees and this will still stretching its neck or there will be the continuous stretching of the neck and still there is a more continuation of the neck here that can be observed and this is how they could develop very long neck as well as they could develop very disproportionate sized four limbs okay however according to darwin valley's view you see here this is the original group exhibiting variation in neck region and this nature selects only such giraffes which could develop very long neck but it could not select this uh, giraffes which have short necks so that is a way of selection made by the nature according to this darwin and valles hence such giraffes only can survive and they are referred to as survival of the fittest and that leads to the development or the formation of only such giraffes which have very long necks so this kind of discrimination or selection is made by the nature and this concept was explained by darwin as well as by valles and at this juncture let me uh, tell you one important thing that at the time of darwin itself there was another such scientist by name alfred valles alfred russel valles here valles and he was also working almost on the same lines as that of darwin and he also developed almost the same concept as that of darwin so both the ideas of darwin and valles they were amalgamated later by the later revolutionist and hence the concept is renamed as darwin valles concept or theory that is what it is given in your syllabus also like darwin valles theory now coming to the explanation of darwin about these finches a kind of birds and you see there will be the a kind of adaptive radiation is developed or is observed in case of these finches and this is what the original stock of these finches and you know uh, there will be the multiple lines of evolution of these finches so one line leading to the development of the beaks which could feed on the leaves okay and the other such kind of uh, line of evolution it leads to the development of such finches or the beaks uh, which can feed on seeds and there are other such kind of other kind of radiation is seen wherein such finches could develop the beaks which can be very useful in eating birds or fruits of the plants so these are called as vegetarian tree finches whereas the other line it leads to the development of the beaks which are for carnivorous nature of eating habits okay and such could develop this kind of beak and another line of evolution it will be uh, developing in such a way that it make use of certain tools like the sticks or any other such da, uh, natural objects for different purposes for example you see here this woodpecker it is developing a kind of beak which can carry something or a chisel like component to dig or to make holes in the branches of the trees so likewise uh, there are such a, there is such other such a line of evolution that is seen here wherein such birds develop uh, the insectivorous uh, type of uh, beaks and there will be the such kind of birds which have these uh, beaks like warbler finches and small tree finches so why this slide is being given over here is that uh, these kind of varieties of these beaks that are developed in case of these finches basically they had different type of beaks as you see here in this chart whereas during the course of evolution 
there are multiple lines of evolution is seen and they could develop different types of beaks as you see here then there are some supports or uh, merits about darwinism these are called evidences in favor of darwinism and the first one being close parallelism between natural selection and artificial selection you know what is artificial selection it is a selection made by man whereas the natural selection it is a selection made by nature so there is close parallelism is there that is same ideas are there between natural and artificial selection so even when we select a kind of thing for any kind of such purposes we always look into advantages in them right similarly this nature also uh, does the, such kind of discrimination that it always selects those organisms having useful characters and outrightly rejects or eliminates the organisms having useless or harmful characters and the remarkable cases of resemblances between this artificial and natural selection is that mimicry and protective coloration you know there are many other such uh, animals which exhibits mimicry and with the help of which they can survive better the best example is being with reference to stick insect or even in leaf insect and they exhibit such kind of protective mimicry and coloration then replacement of earlier giant dinosaurs by small sized carnivorous reptiles that is due to scarcity of food space and global cooling then pedigree of horse and other animals also support darwinism and there is a great correlation between position of nectaries in flowers and the length of proboscis of pollinating insects which can be developed only gradually so these are some supports with reference to darwinism now there are some demerits about darwinism the first one being darwin always uh, make use of this concept what is called as uh, theory of uh, the inheritance sorry the uh, survival of the fittest but Uh, there are such instances where we come across with these organs called vestigial organs so the inheritance of vestigial organs was not explained by darwin if darwin ideas were to be correct there could not be the existence of these vestigial organs right the second one being inheritance inheritance of over specialized organs you know some organisms have some over specialized organ organs and there is no explanation by darwin about such things and he did not explain the cause of variations or the source of variation and the mode of transmission of variations he just said that variations will appear but there is no explanation about how such variations are produced in nature so that was one of the major drawback of or demerit of darwin and it does not include the transitional stages in between which have no fossil record so you know during the course of evolution there are some transitory or intermediary stages can be seen and such intermediary stages are always uh, been seen during the course of evolution both in case of plants as well as in case of animals but darwin never explained about such things and darwin did not differentiate between somatic and germinal variations that thing uh, this thing i already told you that he just said about variations whether those variations are heritable type or non heritable type or whether they are somatic type or germinal type so that explanation was never given by darwin and today we are all in a good position that we can say convincingly that only the characters or the changes that have taken place in the germplasm can only be cells can only be transmitted to next generations but not the changes that have seen in the somatic cells and it does not explain the evolution of terrestrial animals from aquatic animals you know during the course of evolution 
these aquatic animals like fishes they gave rise to amphibians and amphibians they gave rise to reptiles and reptiles to mammals and reptiles to apes also so during the course of evolution there are many such modifications that have been seen in such basic aquatic organisms some of which i already explained you in the class amphibia as well as in reptilia but darwin never made an attempt to explain about such things so these are some uh, demerits or what we call it as lacune of the darwinian concept or darwinism and to overcome all these demerits or the defects that were existing in the darwinian concept or darwinism some scientists have developed a new concept what is called as neo darwinism that i am going to explain it to you in the next class so today i have explained you about only two these uh, theories lamarckism and darwinism hope you understood this thank you